Ali, how are you? David, Very good to see good you. To see you. Inside his MIT lab, Dr. Ali Khadam Husseini is tackling a big problem the hundreds of thousands of people waiting for an organ transplant. Many of those people die while waiting, and many of them have to wait for someone else to die to get an organ. So we try to actually address this problem by being able to make artificial tissues using 3D printing technology. You heard right, and Ali figures within 10 or 20 years he'll have it done. They've already figured out how to 3D print human cells, tissues, and blood vessels. Something like a heart, though, is much more complex. But the building block is this guy. We made aquatic like creatures that can propel and move themselves in, in a solution by using human cells. Being able to generate these kinds of beating tissues uh, will help us a lot uh, in trying to actually accomplish something that could be medically relevant. Yes, that little jellyfish-like being is created, printed to be exact, using human cells that actually emulate a beating heart. We have uh, one of our printers that we can use to print cells and materials to make things like artificial blood vessels or artificial liver. It's not just organ transplants he's trying to solve. One of the other things that we do with 3D printers is we actually try to make artificial tissues that can be used for um, testing drugs for the whole pharmaceutical industry or be able to make devices that uh, let's say a soldier can use in the battlefield to see if there's a toxic compound present. To do that the lab looks at how drugs cause a domino effect as medication moves from say the liver to the heart. It's a complex system one that could potentially eliminate the need for animal testing. Ali calls it organs on a chip. If you just have liver cells by themselves or heart cells by themselves, you don't see this interaction. But if you have human tissues, human organs that actually have this talking um, ability with each other in these systems, we actually use the 3D printers to be able to make these miniaturized tissues that enable this organs on a chip systems. The technology is a game changer for the pharmaceutical industry, which can spend billions of dollars and the better part of a decade testing a single drug. So we have smartphones, smart watches, smart everything. Why not a smart Band-Aid? That's right, that's right. So we've been working on trying to apply um, some new technologies called flexible electronics. This prototype will soon be just as thin as any other Band-Aid, but offer way more, from monitoring the wound to medicating it. Pretty wild stuff. You can actually uh, administer antibiotics or different types of drugs that helps the, the healing process. So wouldn't it be great if your Band-Aid can actually sense these things and then be able to deliver uh, therapies um, as it's sensing it. Okay, let's see. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember this. Yearbook time. And oh here's my, the thing yeah, about Ali. We know each Are other. In fact, nine, we go yeah, way yeah. back. Grade nine. Yeah, yeah. There's you. You don't look any different. Here's a little shorter. Exactly the same. Wow. <laughs> Ali's story is impressive. His family fled Iran during its war with Iraq. And when Ali arrived in Canada, he spoke no English. In fact, for a guy on faculty at MIT and Harvard and having won awards from the highest office, he credits his ESL teacher in junior high as the most influential. Pretty impressive. <laughs> and for me, this has been a great reconnect 20 years after high school, and we've both done well. Ali is oh, yeah, working yeah. to print organs. And me? I talk over pictures for a living. Buchanan. Oh, physics? I had him for physics, that's yeah. right. He was a nice guy. David Coleman, CBC News, Boston.